Chapter 1. The Fisher of Men. The book is called For Charlemagne, and it's by F. Emerson Andrews. Harper Crest Publication. With sturdy strides, a lad of fourteen was covering the endless leagues of the Frankish road from Fulda to the Rhine. Frankish means French. That's in the French country. And the Rhine is a river that separates the French country from another country. I, I'm not sure which. Maybe Spain. It was the year 789. And I could be wrong. That's what I think. It was the year 789 when Charles, later to be called Charlemagne, was king of the Franks. So he was the leader of all the French people. Scarcely a road in Europe was safe for traveling. It was very dangerous. And certainly this deserted track through marsh and forest and over low hills, forcing its way through country only lately conquered from warring tribes, was not one to be traveled alone without good cause. The boy's name was Sigmund, and if there were other Sigmunds, he was Sigmund of Fulda. He was tall and well-muscled, had light hair and blue eyes. His shoes were so patched and dust-covered that even their shape was indistinguishable. Over a shirt-like garment called a tunic, he wore a square blue cloak, which also served as a blanket by night. A small bag strapped on his back contained a piece of bread the size of a fist. All the food he had left and a carefully wrapped roll of parchment. The belt which kept his square cloak in place also held a dagger and a gourd for drinking. In the next hollow, he saw a small stream and paused to fill his gourd and have a drink. Spring was running through the woods. Covering the trees with a foliage of fresh light green. The bushes were in leaf, but it was too early for berries. He would have to make the bread last until he reached the Rhine, or at least a farmhouse this side of it. He got back on the road and strode on. In the hollows it was soft underfoot, and where it wallowed through marshes, the iron tires of occasional bullock carts had cut deep furrows through oozing mud and made walking hard. As he picked his way through the sucking mud, he cast a practiced eye on the tracks, but for two days he had found no signs of recent travel. The only